What's up everyone? I'm Mackenzie Mitchell and welcome to Threads. Today we're in Fort Lauderdale, Florida and we're pulling back the curtain with fitness competitor, model, influencer, and entrepreneur behind two different companies. She's a 10 time cover model, including Maxim, podcast host, and former WWE champion, Amanda Sacamano. Well, first of all, it's so good to see you. Oh my gosh, we haven't seen each other in how long? I know, it's been a minute. It's, been, it's so good to see you. Yes, well, I listed off a slew of things that you are, what you've done. Did I miss anything? Well, yes, you did actually. Okay. Um, I'm a deli clerk. <laughs> wow, who would have expected that, right? <laughs> who would have thought? Um, yeah, so I, I've been helping out at my dad's deli for a long time now. We've had it for over 30 years, so obviously I kind of grew up in the business. So just recently, B and I have been having the time off from WWE. I was able to kind of help them revamp the store and kind of just get a fresh coat of paint. You know how it is, it gotta evolve. Well, let's get into wrestling. Let's talk about your time in WWE. Take me through your evolution of where you were day one to where you are today as who you are as a woman. Obviously it took a long time and I think with anyone we all evolve and you kind of never know where you're going to end up or character changes and, and whatnot. But overall it was just like an amplified version of Amanda Sakamano. Tough enough days it was really when I found this exaggerated Mandy character and kind of just like ran with being like a little bit of a bitch and like a little bit of like a chip on my shoulder. Is there something that's been in your career since day one that has always stayed the same? Some symbolism, if you will, of Mandy Rose. Yeah, I would say the color gold was kind of with me throughout, no matter what my style was, what my vibe was. I felt like I always loved gold, no matter what I changed in the actual look of the gear, the gold boots stayed or the gold accent stayed and you know, golden goddess. So it was- All makes sense. Exactly. <laughs> Well, I was lucky enough to be a small part of your career yeah. when we were at NXT together. We had so much fun. I we think did. at one point people actually thought we were going to like have a fight. Because oh yeah, we were <laughs> because we would have some moments backstage that it was just like we would feed off of each other. It was a lot of fun, it's especially so toxic fun. attraction days. Oh so much fun. But you were the NXT Women's Champion for quite a while. You almost break, broke records when you were the champion. Let's talk about this gear right here in particular, when yeah. you won the NXT Women's Championship. Obviously when I won the title right before that is when I came back to NXT and I went with the whole dark hair look and I just had kind of a different vibe going. I just wanted to be a little edgier. I wanted to be taken a little more serious because it was always the golden goddess and uh, I wanted to switch it up. I always loved red and black combination, but this is actually inspired from Lara Croft from Tomb Raider. Okay. She had that like sexy look, but also like badass. Sure. So I really like this like corset. It obviously, you know, snatched the waist, yeah. which we love. Yep. Leotard and then the sides had like the cute drawstring. So I just wanted to switch it up. You know, my stomach was always out in all of my gear. I felt like, why don't I switch up the look a little bit? It's still really sexy. And it's a big moment in your career. Were you comfortable in this as opposed to wearing a two piece? So it wasn't as comfortable, but I did feel like super sexy still in it. I actually had a top made if I didn't like this. You did? Too. I always, yeah, I always have And what options. did that look like? So I had the top made okay. as an alternative. I was nervous about like not showing the stomach, you know? I wore this just like a few matches after okay. the uh, event. Um, definitely TV matches, it talks of attraction days sure. and all that. So I think this one fit better for me as far as the top went. So I stuck with this one mm -hmm. a little bit more, but it was a good little variation. Absolutely. As opposed to like the, you know, normal two piece set. Well, you mentioned toxic attraction. What did it mean to you <clears throat> to have such a footprint on not only the NXT women's division, but two other women's career? You look at, Gigi Dolan and JC Jane, and then you guys created kind of this look that you were the attraction. Yes. We weren't all matchy-matchy, which I kind of like, I always liked, even like when Sonya Deville and I tag team, like, I don't know, we're, we're not the same person. Mm -hmm. We're both very different, especially Sonya and I. And it was like, even with these girls, like I didn't know them that well, but I didn't want to come in and make them look more like me. Like that was not the vibe. That was never the intention from the get-go. Actually, if anything, it would have been me getting a little of the edginess from them. We all created our own little look, but it meshed so well together without being like, oh, they're so matchy-matchy. You wore these black 
wings with oh, feathers. The wings. The wings, but it's kind of iconic. When you look back at Mandy Rose in NXT, whenever you showed up and wore these wings, people were like, she's in command. This is the HBIC. Tell me about these wings. I don't even think you know the full story about the wings, I don't do you? Think I do either, Have but I, I, do rem I do remember you were like wanting these wings and yeah. you said, hey, where can I get wings? I we're did. in Orlando, Florida. It's really quick. You're like, I need this turnaround. So I gave you Candace LeRae's number. Yes. And we messaged Candace. That was, okay, that. But yeah, Candace didn't have wings that made sense because she's right. like. She was more like. Yeah, colorful, different colors, like more light, and right? Yeah. So we were look. You were looking for black wings at the time. Tell me this story. <laughs> so nothing more stressful, you know, like when you're crunched for time. Your outfit's not fully here. The the gear designers like literally still sewing it, and you're like, well, we got like 20 minutes. Like, yeah, it's if very stressful. If that the wings never showed. So like the FedEx, I kept tracking it. It said that it was coming to the PC. Never showed. So obviously when it got down to the wire of like, we have like an hour or two left, um, I was like, we gotta figure this out because like, I wanted like the wings go with the look. Of like, course, it made the look. It made the look. So that was always inspired by like Victoria's Secret. Like I love that, like fashion and fitness measure. Sure. Someone offered like, hey, like Party City has like decent wings. So they go, they're sending me pictures and videos and obviously I can only go off of like through that. So I was like, just grab all the black ones. So they weren't terrible and obviously no, no one they're, really knows You this. would never know. But the girls were dying. We were all dying because we were just like, wait. And then like, I think like one thing, like a, a piece fell off and I was like, oh my God. So we had to like sew something back on quick. For the, like the vibe, like what I wanted was like huge wings and like maybe it's like a, a portrait of me coming out with the wings first. But like for this, it was just like, just try not to get close to mm -hmm. the wings. <laughs> Don't get a close up on the wings. Well, they were. And it were. It were. Did the other wings ever end up coming? Actually, oh, they did. They did. Yeah, but okay. they were. They were actually no good. Yeah, I, they. They, they just too. didn't work. It didn't work. It was, it was the wings were not meant to be. <laughs> well, let's get your war games gear that kind of paired with the wings because you yes. don't have the wings here today. We do not. No. Okay. All right. Be the wings. <laughs> Love this. The feathers, the leather, all of it together. That might be my second favorite. Me too. Tell me about this gear. So obviously similar to the red um, when I won the title, but I felt like I was in like pleather a lot. Okay. Um, so I just feel like that's another like Mandy Rose moment statement that I feel like I always did pleather. And I just loved the feathers on the bra. I feel like a lot of the girls too want to wear like sometimes street clothes. I just, I did want to go with like the kind of like more just like all black, dark hair. And I never been, you know, in a War Games match. So I did think it was suited well for that. For sure. Okay, so let's talk about another set of gear that was iconic in your NXT career, was unifying the NXT UK Women's Championship yes. and the NXT Women's Championship. Yes, this gear was definitely symbolic for that match. So I loved this gear, actually. This was like one of my favorite cuts. Something about like the halter mm -hmm. just gave like a great look with this. And then she also did um, like the velvet. I'm so, seeing it in person, all the details coming together. It's just beautiful. Fun little fact that I used to do with the bra, you might know this, but I used to always buy a bombshell bra from okay. Victoria's Secret and have them put the gear over it. I was actually really honored to be in that match because I didn't really ever think like I would be in a match with those two women. It was really cool for me. I was super humble, but like in the moment, I, I knew I belonged there and I was like, I'm just as good as these girls. I can, I can fight with them. I can stand my own. So it was like a really, really cool experience. History making for sure. Yes, definitely. Definitely. Okay, so there's been rumors all over the internet that you oh, were supposed to win the SmackDown Women's Championship at WrestleMania 35. Can you confirm or deny that that happened? That that was going to happen, I should say. Vividly, it's hard to remember, but I do remember moments of what happened, and I don't think I've ever shared this anywhere either, but it was very, you know, upsetting because it was like one of those moments that could have been really cool for me, but then it was just like, oh, maybe next time. But yeah, I do remember, obviously we were in a storyline. It was Sonya Deville and Asuka and myself. Sonya and I were starting to, we had some conflict being created. It was kind of the beginning of it where we were kind of costing each other, you know, the match. And we just weren't getting on the same page with things, with our matches with Asuka. We had singles matches with Asuka. And then I was told from somebody, it would potentially be me versus Asuka for the women's championship at WrestleMania. 
which I was like, whoa. I don't even think I really like believed it though, to be honest. Yeah, like, and, I was, and even conceptualize that because that's yeah. a big moment. It, it was, It was. A su it's a super big moment. I was kind of just taking it with a grain of salt. Anything can happen, anything can change. Um, and so it did, but yeah, it was just one of those moments where it was just kind of shitty and you just had to kind of back to the drawing board. And uh, I remember venting to a few people about it, but it was a little bit just, I don't know, disappointing. Yeah, it was of really course. disappointing, but it was one of those things that like, it happens. Do you ha Did you make gear for that night? This was a really cool jacket that I had made. I did end up wearing it at the Battle Royal at WrestleMania 35, which I ended up in the Battle Royal when I was potentially having a title match. But I, you know, I strut my stuff down that ramp and I wore this. It's very, yeah, it's heavy too. I mean, this is like 10 pounds on its own. Right, and wearing it, and it also like tight wow. on the arm. So getting it off was like, I was like, oh shit. But yeah, no, I thought it was really cool. And I probably had some ideas of maybe wings back then to go out if I did have that match, cause it would have been really special, but I, don't, I never had wings made. <laughs> well, this is cool in itself. This is cool, yeah, for sure. So let's fast forward to WrestleMania 36. You had this ultimate golden set of gear. It's probably my favorite. Is it? Yes, oh, absolutely, yeah. that you've ever worn. <laughs> it's so iconic, in my opinion. I Can we bring that. that out and talk about that? Yes, let's do it. It was kind of unfortunate because it was during COVID. So it was obviously at the PC Performance Center. So I just went with like a different designer that I would use here and there. She concentrated a little bit more on like the fashion side of the gear. So it just really like stood out to me as just like, Glamour, it was very iconic. Yeah, and I didn't realize that this was two pieces. I thought yeah. this was just one piece that was sewn together. It's the bra underneath. It was definitely one of my favorites, but it was also one of my favorites that like didn't get enough recognition. Oh really, okay. Yeah. Why did you feel it didn't get enough recognition? Because it, it was just, fans didn't get to see it in person. It was only on TV. It was a big moment, like that storyline with Otis and I, like that kiss, fans would have went nuts for that if we were in a stadium or arena with fans. Um, so it was just kind of like, eh, you know, it's, we made the best of it, obviously you have to, but I kind of wish that this gear was like, I don't know, at an MSG or something like huge. Some, something big, right? Yes. There was a moment at Royal Rumble where yes. you were in the match and then you're about to get eliminated and Otis saves you yes. from being eliminated <laughs> from the match. Do you have that set of gear? Because it's I kind of do. similar to I this, similar. right? Yeah, that was another iconic one. I do, let me grab that. So this gear I loved, super sexy. The only really problem with this one was that I had a really big wedgie most of the time, so I got in trouble. For wearing okay. It. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I got in trouble afterwards, but I mean, we had a huge moment there, Otis catching me under the ring and me, he, him saving me, me jumping back up. I just remember the you know crowd behind me, like amazing moment. So it was really worth it, but it was definitely another iconic gear. I love this gear. And did you choose sequins because it was bigger for like a Royal Rumble or something? Yeah. I love sequins, but I think the vibe that I was going, like I wanted to do the whole leotard look, but I always had the battle as my shape, like of I needed like to be like sexy still, but it was really hard because you're wrestling in it as well. Yes. Yeah. Okay, well, it no. served its purpose. It did. Yeah. We loved her, and then we, we moved on. Yeah. And we moved on to a moment where Mandy Rose went from the Golden Goddess to a more simplistic Mandy Rose, where yeah. you were just wearing like cutoffs and a white crop top and you cut your hair. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to be so basic. Like I didn't, it's always so glamorous and the makeup and this and the hair, like short hair. A lot of people called me soccer mom. <laughs> I really liked that look though. Yeah. I, don't, I felt it like in me, like it's so funny when you talk about like what you wear, you know, it's always a confidence thing. Like I feel more confident in something and I just felt confident that I was just like ready to just like, I don't know, I felt like I could do anything in it. Like nothing was gonna fall out. Like I felt like for a lot of the times, a lot of my gear, it's always like, you know, do I feel Messing situated? It. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there a set of your gear that you had the idea, you said, let's just make it, this sounds awesome. And then it came out and you're like, whoa, this is not at all what I was expecting it to look like or oh, be yeah. like. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a few of those, but I definitely have one right over there. Oh, let's <laughs> show it, let's talk about it. Okay, so, <laughs> so this. This. Do you want to try it on for us? Do you want me to sure. model did in you this ever, real quick Did you ever wear it? Um, I did actually. You did wear I it. I did, I did. Okay. The girls convinced me to wear it, but I was, I was really torn. 
<laughs> okay. How do we feel? It's, it's not as bad. It's actually not as bad on. Right. right. Off, you go like, what is this furry yeah. thing? Like Muppets. Muppets. First thing that took like came to mind was just like Muppets. And the gear that came that was with it, the matching gear was like, I love the gear. It was the green and pink one that I had with the rhinestones, but I wanted like a pink jacket. So I remember vividly when we got it. JC, of course, was just like, what is that? <laughs> and I was like, no, no good. It's like that meme that's like, what are those? Yeah, what are those? <laughs> what do you do with something like those? Just just sit in your closet? Yeah, it does. It was a moment remembered and then we moved on to <laughs> I wanted. Well, Amanda, thank you so much. It has been so much fun chatting and yeah. getting to hang out. Um, we've talked about the past, but what are you doing now? So I have a lot of things going on. It's so crazy. Um, since I've been out of WWE, it's like I'm even more busy. I'm busier than I ever was, which is great. I feel that. I was gonna say, Absolutely. you feel that? Feel yeah. That. My skincare line is taken off. That's been a lot of fun. Uh, I have more time to work on that, as you know, with, with your jewelry line. Like, it's a lot of fun being a, a business owner, but being able to, like, do those things. Of course, love it. Um, yourself. So that's been fun. And then um, getting married this year. Congratulations. So, thank you. So a lot of exciting stuff. And um, yeah, you guys can follow all the up-to-dates on my socials at Mandy Sachs on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. Um, it's all the same. Well, thanks guys. Make sure you're subscribed and like the video.